Let's go over adding your own attachment slots to vanilla items or modded items for that matter. First thing you need to do is make sure you have the required add-on of the item you are going to override. So I have Agent Ransack here. You can use any text search tool that you are familiar with. I like this one, it's free. Um, I can search class canteen, all CPP files in the DZ directory. And that will give me a list of the files that contain this string. And I can double click it and go straight to the object I want to override. So canteen inherits from bottle base. So I need to copy bottle base into my config vehicles. So I'll add it to the top of my list here. And then the next thing I need to do is copy this part into my config vehicles. And now we can override the canteen's attachment slots. So for today's example, let's say I want to add purification tablets to the canteens. To do that, all I need to do is add the, um, I have a few vanilla files here. I'll go to the fireplace and copy out their attachment array into my CPP file here. All right, now when you are adding attachments to a vanilla object, this is really important. Rather than assigning the attachments array, you should always append to the attachment array. Using the plus equals sign means add this slot to my list of attachments. If I don't have that plus sign there, then I'm overriding all of the attachment slots to only include this. So for example, if I were to override the fireplace base and try to add, let's say I was trying to add a book to the fireplace attachment slots, if I simply did this book, if I compiled this, the fireplace would no longer be able to attach any of these attachments. And the only attachment it could attach is this one. And so a lot of Daisy modders, they have a bad habit of copying an attachment array into their mod and then adding their attachment on the end like this. This is a horrible way to go about this. The correct and best practice for this is to simply have your attachment slot and then plus equals it onto the vanilla files. That way, if other mods also add attachment slots to this item, it won't conflict with yours and you can all have your attachment slots added. So always append. Sometimes you might not be able to do this. There are edge cases where you actually want to override the array. For example, if you want to add a new slot and remove an existing slot, you'll have no choice but to override the array. Uh, you'll learn through experience when that's necessary and when there are workarounds for that sort of situation. Um, if you're working with a server mod pack and you're building out a mod pack just for your server, then you can do whatever you want, obviously. But if you're publishing your mods on the workshop, these are some good practices to get into. Now that we have our attachments array defined, we need to figure out what attachment slot we want to add. If we want to add an attachment slot that already exists in the vanilla files, let's say for some reason we wanted to add a bandage dressing to the canteen slot. What you would do is simply search uh, bandage, class bandage dressing under medical, inventory slot medical bandage. This is the slot name that we would put in here. And now if I compile and run my code, the players can attach bandages to the canteen. So it's really simple to add existing slots to the canteen. Adding slots that we've created, unique slots we create, is a bit more complicated. To do that, we need to come down to the config slots part of our CPP file and define a new slot. So here's an example definition. This is the structure of a slot definition. The slot class name must begin with slot underscore and then the name of our slot. So these two must match. And then we have a display name so if this is for a vanilla object, you can usually just use the string table for that display name. So this would be purification tablets display name as our slot name. And then ghost icon, here I have a custom image set. I'll show you guys how to make your own image sets in a different video. But if you don't have an image set, then you can simply put missing in here. And then instead of an image, you'll just have a, like a round circle as the attachment slot. If the vanilla files have a image you'd like to use, then what you can do is open up the scripts folder and go to config CPP inside the vanilla scripts folder, and then look through here for an image set that suits what you're trying to do. 
If you really know what you're doing, you can also open up the image set directly in GUI image sets, and it'll be under Daisy GUI image set. And then here is a long list of all the different images in the Daisy GUI. So just to recap, if you don't have an image and there's no existing image use missing, if the vanilla files have an image that you would like to use, go through the config CPP file in the scripts folder. And if you wanna add your own image set, then go and check out my video on how to do that um, or download this template mod folder, which has an example template already built out. So now that we have our attachment slot, this is the attachment slot that we can reference whenever we want to do something with the slot. So if we want to add this slot to the canteen, we would simply paste it in there. This name is also used in the scripts themselves. So let me show you a quick example of what I mean by that. Uh, we'll go over scripting overrides in a future video because that deserves its own deep dive. We have a static class here which can get the slot ID from a string. And this string is our attachment slot name. So if I copy that in there, this will get the slot ID and then I can say if slot ID equals our example slot, then do something here. Obviously this is on a screwdriver, it doesn't make any sense to do this. I'm just showing you the code example of how you would interact with your slot in-game using the in-game functions with the name of the slot. All right, now we're in the game. Here's our attachment slot, chlorine tabs. You can see I've got a custom image there. I'll show you how to do that in a different video because that's a whole process of its own. And now let's test the slot and it works perfectly. And so now we can purify our canteen directly from the attachment slot. One last thing before we wrap up the video that I want to mention is that you can obviously also override anything that the base class in the vanilla files defines. So let's copy a few of these. Let's copy these into our mod. Let's change the weight to 500, change the item size to one by one. I'll get rid of all of these, they're fine. And we'll increase the quantity to two liters. Save my code and reload the game. And now the canteen is tiny. You can see it only takes up one square and now it weighs two kilos and you can see it's 50% full uh, because it was one liter and now I've increased the maximum capacity to two liters. So that's how you override an item's properties, really simple. And the final thing I wanna mention before I wrap up is if you need to set a maximum stack limit for your slot, you can do that with stack max. So for example, for our purification slot, if I wanted to make it so you could only attach a single tablet and not a pack of 10, so we have 10 out of 10 here. If I wanted only one, I could set this to one. And then when I attach my tablets, the canteen will only accept one quantity worth of that item. One last thing I want to mention, if your item has cargo, like the fireplace here does, you can actually define attachment categories as well. To do that, we use the GUI inventory attachments props. So let's add some cargo slots to the canteen so that this will work. And I'll show you what is happening. So item cargo size from the fireplace, we'll throw that in here and we'll just give the, we'll give the canteen a one by one slot to put seeds in or something like that. And we also have this code here. This defines our GUI attachment categories for this item. So let me make sure this works before I explain what's happening. So now you'll see when I drop my canteen on the ground, we have an attachment category here that I can minimize. If we don't have this category, then all of our attachments will just show up in, in a generic category. So if we had something like medical band bandage as well, I could copy this class config, uh, change this to medical bandage and this to medical bandage. I'll just say medical bandage here and change this to missing. And as far as I know, the description doesn't actually show up for any attachment categories. I've never seen it used. So I'll just get rid of mine there. And if we look at the vanilla files, the description is always blank. Uh, I'll leave it in since vanilla has it there, but it's unused as far as I can tell. And so now if I open up my inventory, you can see we have two separate categories for our attachments. And that's what the missing icon will look like. If you use missing for an attachment slot, it's just a blank circle. And now we can shrink those categories individually. And so the way this is working is we are defining a category and then defining which attachment slots should display inside that category. 
we're giving the category a name. That's this title at the top of the category there. And then we're also giving the category an icon. That is this icon up here. So we have the category icon and the slot icon. Um, these ones just happen to look the same, but they don't have to. You could have unique category icons if you wanted to for like a base building mode or something like that. That'll do it for this. I'll get rid of this code since we wouldn't really want to do that. And that is all you really need to know about the basics of overriding vanilla item characteristics and adding attachment slots. In the next video, we'll go over how to create an image set to create a custom slot icon for use on attachment slots or any other GUI in the game. Oh, and by the way, I left my stack max equals one in here. So let's see what happens when we have a full stack of purification tablets and we attach them. You can see only one of my quantity went onto that attachment slot. So that is definitely working. So with that said, I'll wrap this up here. The source code will be below and I'll see you in the next video.